Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. And today I want to talk about something so simple, but what so many people seem to not get is they're always trying to get the narcissist to care when a narcissist just doesn't care. And this is hard to face for a lot of people. You know, whether it's a narcissist in your family or it's a narcissistic romantic partner, you just want this person to care about you the way you care about them. And it's it's a hard realization to say, you know what? This person is not built like you. This is one of the hardest realizations that you're going to have to face is that this person, you know, they could take or leave whether you're in their life because to a narcissist, people are replaceable, okay? This is so crucial to understand. You are replaceable to the narcissist. So that's why I always tell everybody, figure out what that narcissist was getting out of you, okay? And if they're not interested or they, you know, they're showing you indifference or not, you know, they don't care whether they see you, they don't care if they want to be around you, ask yourself, why is that? Because they're getting it somewhere else. They're getting that validation from somewhere else or they're getting that supply from somewhere else and they don't need you, okay? And you could even see this in narcissistic families. You may have a narcissistic parent or a narcissistic sibling and they don't, you know, they don't really care whether they have a relationship with you. And that's hard to deal with, you know, because you may have, you know, the idea like, well, we're family, we should care about each other. Not when you're dealing with, you know, narcissists, family or not, okay? Because if they don't need you, they are going to show you indifference or they're not going to want to be around you because they don't need you. Narcissists are all about using people, okay? It's all about inflating their ego to make themselves feel better. They're basically just an insecure person that needs constant admiration. Now, the overt narcissists, they're very, you know, direct with it. You'll see it. They try to command a room. They want everybody, you know, attention on them. They're the class clown. But with a covert narcissist, they are subtle about it. And they they want admiration as well. And they do it by playing the victim or they do it by, you know, flattery. But what their ultimate goal is in all of this is admiration, is to feel important. So if that narcissist can get that feeling somewhere else, where somebody else is making them feel important, they're not going to need you. And you see this today, even in romantic relationships, because there's so much supply out there. We're, We're talking supply and demand, you guys, all right? So when there's a lot of supply there's going to be a little de- little demand for you. You can't compete with all that's out there because a nor- in a narcissist's mind is if there's a lot of supply, there's going to be a better supply out there and that when they the minute they see anything that they don't like about you or you're causing them any kind of unhappiness because a narcissist looks at you as a person to fill them up. And that's why a lot of times they could be very snappy at you. They could pick a fight with you sometimes because you're not, you know, going along with the program or you, you know, call them out on something. You're not making them happy because you're not, you know, inflating their ego or telling them that they're right. When you tell a narcissist that they're wrong, all of a sudden they've got a bullseye on you and they're out to get you. Okay. How dare you question their authority? Because what you're doing is you're making them feel shame. And for that, they're going to hate you, okay? A narcissist is going to hate anybody who does not show them admiration, okay? Or they're going to be jealous of people that don't show them that admiration. So when a narcissist criticizes, judges you, or puts you down, it's because you are a threat to that narcissist. You're not validating them. And the irony of all of that is they don't validate you, but they want to be the ones that are, that want to be validated. Okay. They're complete hypocrites. They have two sets of rules. Okay. They they think that, you know, they're always right and you're always wrong. Okay. But the thing is, you've got to say to yourself, you know what? 
whether they care or not, if this person doesn't care about me, then I don't have a place for this person in my life. Because what you're not going to do is you're not going to beg the narcissist, okay? If a person can't value you as a person, these are not your people and these are not people that you want around you. And I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's your family. I don't care if it's your ex-romantic partner. I don't care if it's a friend. You know, you keep people around that add to your life, not take away your life. And when you have people that are indifferent to you or don't validate you or just don't care, then you have to separate yourself from people like that because they're going to make you feel bad about yourself. And especially if you're dealing with a covert narcissist, because when you're around a covert narcissist, they're dismissive. They don't acknowledge you. They don't acknowledge what you say or they refute what that you say, okay? They don't lift you up and they do it in a subtle manner, okay? It could be the rolling of the eyes. It could be turning the back. It could be changing the, the, the subject. If you're trying to tell them about an accomplishment, this is what covert narcissists do all the time. They don't want to hear about your accomplishments, because then it makes them feel bad about themselves. You're doing well and it makes them feel worse about themselves. You know, misery loves company. So the biggest realization is they're not built like you, okay? They don't have empathy. So the minute that you start to see that a person doesn't have empathy or a person doesn't care is a minute that you've got to step back from that person and not rely on them to make you happy. And this is the problem with trauma bonding because you've become too reliant on the narcissist to make you happy because you may have had good times with that narcissist. Understand this, you could still have good times with a narcissist and they could still be toxic, okay? Because in the end, you know, the the affection that they show you or the happiness that they show you is not authentic. And this is how covert narcissists fool you all the time because they'll do certain things for you. They may be nice or they may show, you know, periods of little empathetic, you know, oh, you know, they're caring or they're concerned or something like that. But then they disappear and they ghost, okay? They they you know it by the consistency. Because when somebody is sincere, they don't just disappear on you. And a covert narcissist will disappear on you. So the minute that anybody ghosts you or disappears or starts to make excuses why they didn't pick up their phone or why you know they're always unavailable or why they weren't there for you when they knew you were going through something rough is the minute that you've got to say to yourself, this person is not in my corner or they would have made sure that they were there for me. They are not a ride or die, okay? These are not people that you can rely on, all right? I always use that word rely, and it's important because a real one you can rely on, but a narcissist who's only here for you that, you know, at certain times, you can't rely on them. So when you look at these people, what I want to ask, what I want you to ask yourself is this, can I rely on this person? If I call them, they're, you know, they're there for me or they get right back to me. They treat me with respect. That shows me that I'm important in their life. But if they hesitate to get back to me or they make excuses, then I'm not important in this, in this person's life, okay? And the thing is, you guys, you can't make somebody care that doesn't care. And people do this all the time. They threaten to leave a relationship and the narcissist is like, oh, if you want to leave, there's the door, whatever, okay? And, you know, if somebody is that laid back, you don't have a relationship with somebody like that. That's why I tell people all the time, Somebody who truly loves you will never take a chance of losing you, okay? And this is why people get confused because the narcissist comes back 99% of the time they do. Not all of them. Some of them don't because of their pride or because they're doing good or, you know, for the time being they're okay. Um, but 
when the narcissist comes back, people think they care. No, they're not coming back because they care. They're coming back because usually they, they're going through a low point in their life and they're having a dry spout and now they're going to try you. Even if your relationship ended off bad, they may try you because you offered something that they need, okay? Maybe they're very lonely. Maybe they're just trying you because they have nothing else going on. They're trying you and then when something better comes along, they're going to, you know, ditch you again. So, but the point is, when somebody really cares about you, they will never take a chance of losing you. Period, dot, end of story. They're not going to come back a year, two years, three years later. They're never going to take that chance. Anybody that does that didn't really care about you. And now they're just trying you back now because they're not doing so great for themselves or they're bored with who they've got. But the point of all of this is this, you guys. If somebody doesn't care about you, you've got to let them go. And that's har the hardest thing you could do is tr trying to let somebody go that you thought that it was something different. You thought that this person was somebody that they really weren't, okay? Because of that, you know, love bombing or that fake empathy. But the point is, the minute that you see that red flag that they really don't care, they're indifferent to you or something along those lines is the minute that you have to put your energy elsewhere. You have to put your energy into people that treat you better, okay? You want to be around the people that care about being around you, not the people that could take or leave it, okay? You never want to be around somebody who could take or leave you because, you know, it doesn't get better later on. And then when you have problems with this person later on, they're not around, they're not around. Why? Because the interest was never there from the get-go. This is like when you, I'll give you an example. Like you start, you know, dating somebody and they seem to like you and everything like that. But, you know, they're there, but they're really not there. A lot of times you may see them, they're still on the dating apps or, you know, they're, they contact you infrequently. They're not all into you. They don't care because they're juggling other options. And when you have a narcissist, they're pretty much not going to be all into anybody because they're dealing with a multitude of different supplies. So their energy and their, their resources are going to be dispersed over a bunch of different people and not just focused in on you. They can never give one person all of themselves and they can never love anybody. You know, this was another question that somebody asked and they said, well, is a narcissist capable of love? No, a narcissist is not capable of love because in order to love somebody, you've got to make yourself vulnerable and a narcissist will never leave themselves open to be vulnerable because they don't want to be attacked or they don't want to be hurt down the road. And I actually, I dealt with somebody like that where the relationship ended off bad. And I said to him, I said, you know, why did you do all those cruel things that you did? And he said, well, I was afraid of getting hurt. Okay. So, and this is typical of a narcissist mindset. They're afraid of getting hurt. So there will always be a wall up and they will never let themselves go and they will never open up themselves completely to you and leave themselves open to be completely vulnerable to you. I'm telling you, okay? Listen to me when I tell you guys this because I've lived a lot of life, I've dealt with a lot of people, and I've seen this time and time again. When you deal with a narcissist, they will never ever let themselves go completely to one person, okay? They're not gonna take that chance because they're afraid of getting hurt, okay? So... The, the whole point in all of this, you guys, is that no, they can't love, but what they can do is they can lust, a narcissist lust. And that's why a lot of them, they fall in love really fast too. You know, it's not always so much that they're looking for the supply. Sometimes it's just instant pleasure. They see you, you're a shiny new toy and they're not loving you, they're lusting you, okay? because they have a fantasy in their mind as to what they think you really are. And then when they get to know you, you know, the more you, you go out with somebody, the more it becomes like the old shoe 
and the narcissist gets bored. It's not so exciting anymore. And narcissists love excitement. That's why they love multiple partners. Not all narcissists cheat, by the way, but mo uh, most of them do, okay? So the thing is, you guys, the bottom line is, look at how somebody treats you, all right? How somebody treats you tells you how much they care about you. And it's not just in the first three months. It's got to be a consistent progression. See, a narcissist starts at the top of the mountain with the, with the attention and the consistency, and then it wanes and it goes down. A healthy relationship starts at the bottom and it grows together. The more you spend time with that person, the more you start to like that person, the more you know you create memories with that person. You're creating, you know, something with somebody. You're creating a connection. It's not an instant connection like the narcissist that paints that picture and mirrors you and it's, oh my God, it's an instant. Con no, it's not an instant connection. It's something that, because you're not going to know that person in the beginning, okay? That person is a blank slate. So how are you going to know whether you have a connection with somebody over time, Spending time with them, being in different circumstances with them, doing different things with them, being around their family and them being around your family and seeing them in different kinds of situations and how they deal with those situations and how they deal with conflict. You know, when they're angry, when they're happy, when they're depressed, when they're sad, when they're broke, when they're rich. That's when you're really going to know somebody. When you've exp when the, you've experienced all these kind of emotions with somebody, that's when you're really going to know who that person is. But see, in the beginning when you date a narcissist, you know, they seem wonderful and they're painting that picture that you guys are like the perfect match. So the point in all of this you guys is you can't make somebody care that doesn't care, okay? And you just got to keep keep fishing in that pond till you find somebody that is like you, that cares, okay? Somebody who will go out of their way for you and not just in the first three to six months. Somebody, you know, that has a heart. And narcissists portray that they have a heart, but they don't. They're cold. They're like a cold rock, okay? And especially covert narcissists. You fall in love with a cold, a cold fish, okay? They have no passion. They're cold people. You Believe me, you don't ever want to deal with that or get married to that because you're going to fall into a black hole of depression and anxiety and you're going to be alone in that relationship. You're going to feel, that's worse than being alone is to be in a relationship with a covert narcissist and have to deal with a person that is like a cold fish. It's terrible, you guys. Uh, believe me, I know. So the thing is this. Understand this. Look at their background. Look at, you know, if they're a healthy individual all around. Is this person a healthy individual? Did they grow up in a healthy environmental childhood? Okay? And if they didn't, are they self-aware to realize that and they want better for themselves, okay? They're not going to fall into the same pattern of their toxic parents or their toxic uh, family by doing things like the silent treatment or berating you or in some cases, you know, uh, physical abuse or something like that because this is where they came from and they think that's okay, all right? You want somebody that can humble themselves, and a narcissist can't humble themselves. They're proud, haughty, and arrogant, okay? They're not people of God. They're not of the truth. They are liars, all right? So you see any of those red flags, you've got to say, I am out of here. I, I am not throwing my life away on somebody like that just because they were nice now and then because, you know, that niceness is not going to be that's going to go away. The longer I get to know them, that's just to get me. And once they get you, then you really see the core of that person. Or once you tell them no, or give them resistance. So the thing is this, you guys, I, I know it's really hard out there. You know, a lot of people, you know, man and woman have become lovers of themselves. And, you know, it is written, this is the world that we're living in. But, but 
There are good people out there and it's up to you. That's the whole purpose of these narcissistic podcasts is to sharpen your brain so that when you meet people, no matter who they are, whether it's a romantic interest, whether it's dealing with family, whether it's in business, whoever it is in your world, you're able to size them up and know what you're dealing with, okay? And know how to handle them and know if this person, you know, is a team player. See, a narcissist is not a team player. They don't look at you fair in a fair and equitable way. They look at you as beneath them and they've got to be above you. So if you're dealing with somebody who always has to be the authority on things, a know-it-all or, or anything like that, they're always going to put you down. And you don't want somebody like that because somebody said, oh, they'll break your spirituality. They'll break your self-esteem. They'll cause, you know, anxiety, depression, and stress. And you'll get, end up with other real physical illnesses from all of that because of the mental anguish that you went through. They create anxiety and stress and, and cancer and thyroid problems. There's a host, a whole slew of problems that you'll get with somebody that cuts you up. All right. So, you know, you're going to know whether somebody really cares when you're at, when you're down in the dumps, when you're down in the dumps, you're sick. That's when you're really going to see who the narcissist is and who isn't because the narcissist is going to take a powder and not be there for you. They will leave people for dead when you're of no use to them or that they have to put themselves out for you. Okay. That's how you're going to know whether that person really cares about you or they don't care about you. And you have to just accept it. If they don't care about you, fine. Goodbye. Good luck. But you know what? I'm not going to put my energy into you and I'm not going to chase you. Okay. My energy is going to be on myself and whoever else shows me the same kind of caring that I show them. So, you know, you give to people that give to you. You don't give to people that don't give back to you. And when I mean giving, I mean giving your attention, giving your validation, you know, being reliable, being a best friend to you, being somebody, you know, that you can count on. And that's how you're going to, you know, that's how you're going to roll. You're going to bring people in your life that add to your life and you're going to cut out and delete and block all the zeros that treat you like an option. Okay. Cause you're better than that. You're better than that and know who you are. Get, get yourself together, work on yourself. And the more that you work on yourself, the less bullshit you will take from other people because you don't need them. Become a dangerous person, you guys. And by becoming a dangerous person, that means that you've got it together, all right? You've got it together in your professional life, in your family life, whether you have children. You're on a routine and you know what you've got to do for yourself. And if somebody comes along and they care, you give, you show them the same kind of courtesy and you care for them because it's, you know, it's a give and take here. You can't just expect people to give to you when you're not going to give to them. And if they're not caring, then you have to say to yourself, you know what? I'm, I'm probably dealing with a narcissist that has no empathy. They could care less. I'm replaceable to them. This is not somebody that I need in my life. No, thank you. Let me refocus on somebody else and let me refocus on myself. Let me do something else than to call and beg this person to care because they will never care. Okay. They will never care because inside they're miserable people that are never happy and they don't care about anything but inflating that fragile, inferior ego. Understand that. That's all they care about is to make themselves feel like they're important because they feel so low deep down underneath themselves and they feel that shame underneath themselves, but they'll never ever acknowledge it but it's there. That's what you could see it in their actions. That's why they always got to brag about things or they got to, you know, prove to you they're great at this or they're great at that, or they know better than you. That's you're dealing with an insecure person that needs to constantly be validated 
get away from them. Okay. Get away from them. So I hope that helps you guys in understanding about narcissists that, you know what? It's not you. It's that you're dealing with, you know, a soulless individual that, you know, just doesn't have that heart or that Holy Spirit in them to want to, you know, be a good person and, and want to do the right thing. And they believe in the truth and they're not, you know, a liar or something like that. Get away from these kind of demons that just suck the life out of you because that's what they're going to do because evil will drag you down to their level. Okay. You know, misery loves company. Remember that these people want to drag you down. That's why you've got to cut them out of your life and say to yourself, I'm dealing with a damaged person here. I need, I'm not going to be able to fix them. Nobody's going to be able to fix them and they can't self-reflect. So they can't fix themselves. But you know what? I can't save the world and I can't change them, but I could change my life and I'm going to change that by not being around somebody that's toxic like that because I want to lift myself up. I don't want to drag myself down and I have to just accept them for who they are. They're not who I thought they were. They don't care. And that is not somebody that I need in my life. So I hope that helps you guys. If it does, please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship, or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist, or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship, and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram the game exp 123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.